We've been going through the series on 2 Corinthians, and we're, uh, we're all, I think this is halfway through, not 100%, but uh, yeah, we're pretty much right there. And so tonight, we'll be going through 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 14, through chapter 7, verse 1. So yeah, we have some Bibles. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. We'll be reading out the English Standard Version. The Standard around here. It's good stuff. And tonight, uh, we have a title, The Temple for God, Not for the World. And so, as I was working on this message, this week, um, it, it's just a very apparent theme for this for this section of the scripture. And so we kind of remember where we left off last week, okay? So we just, we're moving on from one of the longest sections of 2 Corinthians. Paul just got done with this really long kind of like sermon to the Corinthians that kind of spanned from pretty much chapter 1, all the way up until now. So today we'll see that Paul kind of starts a new track of what he is uh, trying to get through to the Corinthians. So Paul, I mean like, this, these past few weeks, we, we had youth group last week, we had youth group before Christmas, and we had this continuing theme of being messengers of reconciliation, right? It's this message that, as Christians, we are to be ones that share the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ, with the world. And so Paul, I mean, like, he has this theme throughout pretty much all that he writes that we need to be sharers of the gospel. But today he wants, or he takes this section of scripture and has, has a, a pretty abrupt thing to share with the Corinthians. And so before I dive into all that, we should probably read the scripture that I'm talking about, right? And so I'll start off in verse 14. You guys can read. Before I even do that, let's go to God in prayer because that's even more important than me just trying to give what I want. Sam's in agreement. <laughs> oh, Heavenly Father, um, even though I'm not the best with words, even though I screw up a lot, um, you still give grace, and I'm so thankful for that, Lord. And I'm sure there's so many students here that, um, that empathize with that feeling as well, Lord. There is just a lot of moments in life where we do not live up to your standard. Um, and we need your grace. We need your forgiveness. So we thank you, Lord. Um, and we just pray for this time. Uh, please enlighten our minds. Amen. All right. The word of the Lord. Verse 14, chapter 6. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them, and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst, and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. 
This is the word of the Lord. Have you guys ever heard of the phrase, like a bowl in a china shop? Kind of a typical phrase. It's a very, very illustrative phrase. This phrase emphasizes that a bowl, a muscular cow with horns, would run and crash into all the things in a china shop, which is a small store full of precious, valuable plates, cups, things of that kind of nature. They're very like delicate things, right? A bull should never be allowed into a china shop, right? Those two things don't go together because a bull's nature is to be destructive and to not be careful and to, to be careless and to be in a china shop you need to be careful right so something else that we read tonight don't go together according to the text that we just read the two things that don't go together, that don't mix well with one another, like a bowl in a china shop, are believers and unbelievers. Paul makes it clear through the scriptures that Christians should not align themselves with the world. There is something so wildly different from Christians and non-Christians that we are not to live like them. And I would just like to put this out right away so you guys don't stumble upon this message. This message isn't saying we are to never associate, associate with believers. I'm not saying that we have to stop interacting with the world. We can still work alongside unbelievers, recognize the value of their lives, and most importantly, continue to share the gospel with them. But we are told explicitly that we are not to live like them. We can still talk to them, do, do things in life with them, but what we're not supposed to do is to live like them, okay? We're not to align ourselves with them. But sometimes we do align ourselves with them, right? Sometimes we align ourselves way more with the world than we do with faithful, gospel-believing people. Do you fall into these temptations? The temptations of sin that your unbelieving friend kind of walks you down? Have you ever joined maybe an atheist, atheist cult worker? in their crude jokes that like put others down? Or maybe like somebody in school that is obviously not respecting the Lord, but you still follow their pattern? If you do this, you're not aligning yourself with God, but you're aligning yourself with the world. God says we are to go out from their midst, meaning we are to be separated from the way that they live and the way that we live. And since we have been defiled and aligning ourselves with the world, and when we recognize that, we are to go and cleanse ourselves from every defilement of the body and the spirit. The text literally says that. We are to have a change in our lives from that. People in the world can hold a great influence, right? We can admire a celebrity's acting abilities or singing abilities, or an athlete's strengths, the way they perform a sport. It's so great, we just want to copy everything they do. Or maybe it's a coworker that we just get along with really well. They're funny and relatable, and we, we laugh at their jokes, but soon we start doing more and more of the things that they do that do not honor God. Are these people leading you down a road of sin? Are you aligning yourself 
with the world? And so the text today, I mentioned that like Paul has this abrupt change from focusing on being witnesses of the gospel to be careful, you'll go out into the world to share the gospel, but you're not to align yourselves with the world. And so Paul has to take this break in a way in 2 Corinthians to address the church in Corinth. You see, the city of Corinth was an extremely worldly place. They served many gods and idols, and they were very influential in the church's life. We know this because the first book of Corinthians, Paul addresses them on so many other sin issues. Because there is absolutely no difference between how the Corinthians were living and how the world was living. Paul was addressing the church, again, on the issue of aligning their self with the world. You see, Paul, he needed the Corinthians to change the way they're living. They let the world in way too much. And to try to illustrate that today, I kind of have a science experiment for us, right? Who here just loves science? I love science sometimes, mainly when you see things change a lot, okay? And so, you can see here that I have four things going on. Can everybody see this? All right, good to go. So I have one empty, kind of larger glass. I have two clear cups. And then I also have one cup that's pretty dirty, right? Okay? And so this clear cup, let's say this represents the, same, the, the church in corn, okay? And so I'm going to dump it right in here. This is the church in corn, but this is, this is believers right here, okay? And this cup, the dirty cup, this is the city of Corinth, not the church of Corinth. This is the city of Corinth. This is the world, right? This is the darkness within the text. The church of Corinth is the light you see in the text. What two do these things have in common? When we mix them together, we see not a whole lot. They become one and the same, right? There is no difference between the church now and the world. They're mixed together. They're dirty together. Okay? And so what does Paul want us to do? He doesn't want us to align ourselves with the world anymore. What he wants us to do is align ourselves with God. And more importantly, have God has aligned himself to us, and we just need to recognize that. And when we start to align ourselves with God, once we have become dirty, we're purified. We become clean once we align ourselves with God. The dirt of the world washes away. There's nothing left of that dirtiness anymore. But that the dirtiness happens when we align ourselves with the world. And when we align ourselves with God, we become clear again. And just a super cool sentence explanation. So like the Corinthian church, God has the same promise for them as he does for us. The promise is outlined in chapter 7, verse 1. It's the promise that God is dwelling among them. He's dwelling among us. We become the temple of God, right? 
When we align ourselves with the world, we are walking hand in hand with them in sin. It doesn't mean we can't do things with the world, like I said at the beginning, or interact with them. But when we start incorporating what the world does, when we start living like the world does, we're the world. When you try to be like that TikTok influencer or fall into the party life of that really good friend of yours, when you abandon the things you hold to that are close to God, you're giving up what's most important to you. The world rejects God, and if we're going to walk hand in hand with them and still say we walk with God, I think we're lying to ourselves, aren't we? And so, when, when we recognize this about our lives, we got to do 180, guys. We got to go back to God, cling to Him. Go back to Him so He can cleanse us through the indwelling of the Spirit. You are not to align yourselves with the world. You are to align yourself with God. We are the temple of the living God. That's what the text says. You are the temple of God. If you trust in Christ, you, you are where God dwells. God is within you. He is working inside of you. And you got to lean into that. you got to trust in him for that. You're not to let the bowl into the china shop. You are not to pour that dirty cup of stuff into the clean cup of water. God lives in us. And we should have no part in how the world lives, right? As we go out into the world, we are to continue to share his gospel. That is our mandate as Christians. It is so important that we do that, right? But as we do that, we are not to fall into the sins of the world. We are not to conform unto the image of the world, but we're to conform unto the image of Jesus Christ. We are to share the gospel with everyone we meet, but we are not to fall into the sin they invite us to. It's pretty interesting, because we can also examine this in Jesus' life himself. Jesus sat at tables for dinner with tax collectors and sinners, the worst of the worst in Jesus' day. Jesus was there with them, probably shared the good news with them. Jesus was in a very intimate setting with these sinners, but he did not conform into the sinner, right? I think we should take a note of that. And Jesus was perfect, and we'll never be perfect. But we shall look to align ourselves with Jesus, with God, and not to align ourselves with the world. So we'll break off into timeless small groups now to discuss this a little further, talk through some questions. So be willing to be honest with your leaders, with one another, and yeah. Well, and there.